What's up, nerds? It's Pat from the Nerds You're Looking For podcast, and today I'm going to talk about whether or not I think you should play the brand new game, Candle, the Power of the Flame. But before we get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, make sure the notifications are set for always and not occasionally. Not sure why that's a thing, but there's a whole other video. And then if you haven't already, smash that like button. That helps us out a lot. Just tells YouTube to circulate this video more than they normally would. And for a small YouTube channel like we are, that's crucial. So like I said, we are going to be talking about Candle, the Power of the Flame, which is a brand new game from a indie developer called Tiku Studios, which this is literally the only game they've ever put out. Tiku is the name of the main character in Candle, so obviously this was a passion project. They made the studio to make this game. It was originally a, a big Kickstarter project. And I actually played this on Xbox One, but I know that it's available for uh, Switch as well. Um, and it's also available for PlayStation 4. I mainly am curious if, uh, if you played it on Switch, definitely comment below. Tell me if it plays as well, because I never really had a ton of problems uh, with this game on Xbox One. But I know whether you play it on dock or handheld, sometimes the Switch is a little bit different. So if you played it on Switch, uh, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if it would play it a little bit better or worse. So the first thing that is going to grab your attention with this game is the art style. Like literally when I was kind of browsing through some of the coming soon games on the Xbox Live store, I immediately, my eye was drawn to this game because of the art style. It absolutely pops in this game. So basically, like I said, it was an indie studio. The way that they made this game is they designed everything by hand and then they actually went in and painted it with watercolors. And it looks absolutely beautiful. You could tell that a lot of meticulous detail and meticulous work was put into uh, making this game absolutely beautiful. The colors pop off the screen. It is amazing. And if you listen to the podcast, which I hope you do, the nerds you're looking for, I'll leave a link in the video description below. If you haven't already checked it out, you guys know that I love playing platformers. That's a, a good chunk of the games that I play are platformers. I just love the genre. And this is a platformer, but most platformers play a certain way. So basically like a game like limbo which is always kind of my go-to example for what platformers could be and how great platformers are that's kind of my go-to example in that game essentially in about 80 percent of the platformers you're going to play you start off at point a and you need to get to point b and you need to solve some kind of puzzle in between this game is a platformer for sure, but it almost kind of plays like an uh, like a triple A RPG in the sense that you don't just go from point A to point B. Essentially, how this plays is there the game's broken up into four different stages. You have the prologue, you have Act One, you have Act Two, and you have Act Three. And each act, you have about six or seven or maybe even eight like screens, I guess you could call them. And essentially what happens is you will find an item in one screen that you need to, to, un, to use to unlock a door in another screen. So basically you can't just, okay, I'm going to clear this screen and then I'm going to move on and I'm never going to have to deal with that screen again. That's not how this game works. Like I said, in like AAA RPGs, you... Oh, you have to talk to this woman to get this material and then you got to go talk to this guy or th th so on and so forth. You kind of have to bounce back and forth. And that's a good part of RPGs is doing that, going from place to place and getting all these materials to do this one thing that you have to do in the game. And that's kind of how Candle plays is basically you'll get one thing from one screen and you'll have to remember, oh, that fits into this door to unlock this door, which will give me this thing. And it just it just kind of goes in circles, which kind of leads me to my first uh, problem that I had with this game and that is the fact that there's a lot of loading screens now I'm not gonna sit here and pretend and complain about how long they were because I mean they were quick but they have to be quick because you see so many of them because you have to go from screen to screen so many times that every time you go from one screen to another screen you have a loading screen and like I said, they're super quick, so I can't complain about that. I appreciate that. But thank God 
that they're quick because you have to see like a million throughout the course of this game literally because you have to gather all of these things to unlock this door or this boat or whatever a lot of times you'll go to the like essentially the final screen of the act get the key and have to go all the way back to the very beginning to unlock this first door that you couldn't unlock so if you hate loading screens you're not gonna like this game because there's a ton of them but despite that i think another thing other than the art style which i've already talked about the other thing that really kind of grabbed my attention when I first started playing this game is how unique the story is. It's such a weird story, but weird in the best way possible. It has like this African feel to it. Like they don't speak English, they don't speak Spanish, they don't speak German or anything like that. They they speak this unique language and essentially you have to, they, they have two ways of interpreting what they're saying to you. First way is they have like these little, I guess, thought bubbles. They're kind of like these little like animation that kind of give you clues to what they're saying. Or there's a narrator who kind of sounds like Anthony Hopkins. So much so, like I thought that when I first started playing the game, I was like, did they get Anthony Hopkins? That seems like a big get for an indie studio like this. But then my wife actually came into the room while I was playing this one time. And she's like, is that Anthony Hopkins? I was like, it does sound like him. It's not. It's not. It's a guy named Terry Wilton, who apparently does a lot of video games, but I'd never heard of him before. That being said, I have another little nitpick about this game. And the fact that the, the tutorial and like the, the narrator and stuff, it's really uneven. So... There are times where they will essentially just tell you how to play the game. Like you're a middle way through the game and the narrator will come on and basically tell you what you have to do. Not in, in certain terms, but he basically makes it pretty obvious what you're supposed to do. And that really bothers me because at, at times when I need him to talk and need him to tell me what to do, because some of this game is kind of confusing, he's nowhere to be found. But when I don't need him, when I've already figured it out 30 seconds ago, then he tells me what to do. And it's just kind of uneven in that sense. Like sometimes they hold your hand, sometimes they don't give you any help whatsoever, which is super frustrating. So the last thing that I want to hit on before I give it my official star rating is the most important thing when it comes to games. Like you can have cool art, you can have a cool story, but if the game doesn't play the way it's supposed to play, then it's going to suck. And unfortunately, I don't think the gameplay mechanics were as crisp as I would like them to be. They weren't horrible by any means. Like It doesn't ruin the game for me, but it does become frustrating. I think the most frustrating part of this game wasn't necessarily the, like, the puzzles or anything like that. It was just that Tiku didn't do what I wanted him to do every single time especially with the jumping. The jumping seemed very uneven. Like he would jump from point A to point B, like a certain distance. And then the next time he would jump further. And it was really weird in that sense, especially if you're jumping up, it always seemed like he was a fucking superhero who could jump like distances that aren't even possible. There, he was basically the rock from Skyscraper. It was ridiculous. But then when I wanted him just to jump like a short distance onto this lily pad, he would just jump over it and he would fall back in the water, which you're thinking, well, that shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, he can probably swim, right? Which is the case. He can swim. But a lot of the times you had a flame like on a candle, like the, the title of the game would suggest, and you have to get it from point A to point B. Well, if you jumped into the water, then your candle would extinguish. So the fact that he didn't jump the same distance every single time and you couldn't really judge how far away you were because you didn't know how far he was going to jump was pretty frustrating. It wasn't like super obvious, like it's not something that really broke the game for me, but it was kind of frustrating. And the last thing that I want to talk about, and probably the funnest part of this game, were the mini games. So every once in a while you'd come across a trader or somebody and you would have to do what basically just these mini games. Like one time you had to play somebody in a game and then there's other time where you had to do like this. Basically you had to move these pipes and kind of line them up to the picture and they were super hard and but also very, very uh, satisfying. So I thought that that was really cool. It kind of 
was a breath of fresh air. Like, I only think it happened like three or four times within the course of the game. But when it did happen, it was super, super satisfying. And it was just like a breath of fresh air. All right, nerds, so that is my review of Candle, The Power of the Flame. I am officially ready to give it a star rating on the podcast. Anytime we review something, we always give it out of five stars. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think ultimately it is a fantastic game that has a great art style, uh, great unique story. However, like I said just a little bit ago, the gameplay mechanics aren't quite as crisp as I would like. You have a lot of loading screens, which can be frustrating, and sometimes the game holds your hand a little too much for my taste. So I'm going to knock it down a little bit, but not too much. I'm going to go give give it a three and a half stars. I would especially suggest playing this game if you're like me and you're a big fan of platformers because it's a great platformer. I will probably end up playing it again at some point. And that's saying a lot because I have a huge backlog of games and so I don't usually play or replay a game uh, very often. But this is definitely one that I want to experience again knowing what I know now. So that's it nerds. That is my review of Candle Power of the Flame. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, do all of the things that I said earlier. In case you forgot, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, smash that like button. And as always, I will put all the links to everything else, including the podcast, the nerd you're looking for, in the video description below. My name is Patrick Kuhn, and as always, I'm the nerd you're looking for. Take it easy, nerds. (laughs) 